Whoa, did you guys see that shark? That was awesome. All right, hello everybody and good morning. Welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Talia, I'm from our education department. I'm excited that I can share a little bit of my morning with you. Now, today uh, we are gonna be practicing our counting today. So we're gonna be counting some animal friends that live in the ocean and seeing who we can discover today. Um, now, if you have any questions uh, during our program, if you see something and you're like, hmm, I am curious, I wanna know a little bit more about that, you are welcome to ask us questions. Uh, now, you can do that a couple of different ways depending uh, on when you're watching this program. If you're watching this live uh, on, let's see, what is it, Monday morning at nine o'clock, whoa, Zebra Shark coming by. Oh my goodness. Uh, you can text this number, right there on your screen. It is 562-286-1838. And if you are younger viewer, just make sure you get parent permission to text us in. Um, so you're welcome to text us live. Uh, if you're watching this a little bit later on in the day or the week or the month, uh, you can still ask us questions. We just ask that you email us instead. And that number is, or excuse me, that email address is below my number here. It is live at lbaop. Org. So those are two ways to interact with us depending on when you are watching. So um, you are welcome to ask questions during our program today. Now, uh, we're going to be looking for some animals today. We're going to be seeing how many of those animals there are. But I want to make sure that we can wake up our brains and um, see what we notice about our little exhibit here first. This is one of our webcams here of Shark Lagoon, in case you couldn't tell, uh, with all my sharks swimming by. We actually had some of our unicorn fish swimming around the camera too. So I think sometimes they figure out with the camera, Ooh, wow, zebra shark <laughs> coming by. Yeah, my zebra shark is doing laps today. Oh my goodness. Whew, it must be cardio day today. Whoosh. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way so you guys can make some observations. Now let's see, what do we notice? about this exhibit. We'll kind of wake up our scientist brains, make some observations. Oop, I just noticed that our, uh, our big ray there, we have a big reticulated whiptail ray, just kind of slid into home there and uh, took a little, uh, a little rest right below where our camera is. I see his little tail sticking out there. <gasps> Ooh, I notice a really big slow shark coming towards the camera too with a beautiful smile. Do you see it? Here it comes. That's big guy. That's our big sand tiger shark. Giving you a big good morning smile there. I also noticed, oh, here comes my zebra shark again. <laughs> I see it in the back there. Whoosh. And a reef shark. Oh my goodness. I noticed also that there's not only different types of sharks, but there's diff whoa, different numbers of them too. There's a couple of these reef sharks with the black tips on their fin. I have one big stingray. I have one big sand tiger shark. Hello, one of my two zebra sharks doing laps for me this morning. And there's lots of little fish too. I don't know if I can count all the little fish in our exhibit. Ooh, I noticed a friend that's hiding. Do you see it? Kind of on, let's see, if you're facing the TV, that's going to be a probably on your right hand side. Also notice my other zebra shark. Woo, taking a nap there. But there's another friend here. Did you know this, this friend? There's a turtle taking a nap. Oh my goodness. All right, my friends, I said we were going to practice counting today. So I think we should get going on our counting journey um, and see who we can find for our first animal friend. So I have a friend in the studio helping me out today. I have Miss Sarah. Uh, so I'm gonna have her put up my first animal in our counting journey today. Oh my goodness. My friends, have you recognized, do you recognize this animal? Have you seen one before? Hmm. I count one, one sea turtle. Oh my goodness. One sea turtle. This, I think, is, is this a green turtle? Miss Sarah? I don't remember. Yes! Yay! All right, I got it. This is a green sea turtle. Um, and turtles are pretty awesome animals. They are very good at swimming. They have nice kind of flippers instead of hands like us to help them swim in the water. They also have this nice hard shell. It would be pretty hard if I knocked it in to help 
keep them safe. So kind of like we wear a helmet when we ride a bike. It's kind of like having a helmet on all the time. Ooh, and let's watch this turtle do a nice swim. So they're going to be using their front flippers to kind of get their push through the water. Sometimes how we use our arms to swim forward. And then it looks like they're using their back flippers to kind of steer a little bit more. Do you think we could swim like a turtle? Let's see. I'm going to make my hands kind of into flippers. And I'm going to see if I can swim like a turtle. Let's see. Whoosh. There I go. Whoosh. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to turn around because I'm going to hit this, this wall here. Whoosh. I guess I'm a, very, I'm a very fast turtle today. How about you guys? How are we doing? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back here. Whoosh. That was a lot of swimming in the morning. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. We did it. We swam like a turtle. Good job, my friends. You were all excellent turtles. Great job. All right, so we have one sea turtle. What comes after the number one? Hmm, I wonder if Miss Sarah could help me out and get another counting adventure animal. <gasps> the screen, I see one. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see it a little bit better. We have two birds here. We have one bird and two birds. Oh my goodness. This particular type of bird is called a puffin. If we want to be even more specific than that, this is a horned puffin because it has this little thing right above his eye. He has a little, little feather boop, right there. And my other friend has one right there. So these are two horned puffins. Um, they are a type of bird that are a diving bird, so they are very good about kind of flying under the water. They can fly in the air too, but they're kind of built a little bit more for the water, so they are very good at swimming, and they actually find a lot of their food in the water too, so they'll kind of be flying up on high, go, aha, there's a tasty snack, and then go down to the surface with a splush, and catch some yummy food in the water. Sometimes they're getting little teeny tiny shrimp. Sometimes they're getting little schooling fish and they'll hold them in their beak and then fly back to their nest. They live on really tall cliffs and then eat their snack. <gasps> Whoa! Oh my goodness. Do you see that? How many fish are hiding in that puffin's beak? Did you expect to see that many fish? in one bird's beak. That's a lot. Let's see. I wonder if I can count how many fish. Let's see. I see an eyeball here. So I'm going to count that as one, two, three, four, five, maybe there's six. Can't quite tell. Seven. I think there are seven, seven, seven fish in one puffin's mouth. That is amazing. Can you fit seven fish in your mouth? I don't think so. That'd be difficult. I, I have, may, I maybe get, might get one. Maybe. But that's seven, seven little fish in this one puffin's beak. <gasps> oh my goodness. Their beak is actually really cool too. Um, it has some special things in it to help it catch on to all the yummy fish. It has little spines on the inside that kind of act like little, little forks almost. Go and catch on to the very slippery fish. Um, they also use their tongue to help them catch the fish. So they'll catch a fish, kind of hug it in place with their tongue, go get another fish, hug it in place with their tongue, get another fish, hold it in place with their tongue. So that's how they can stack so many yummy, delicious fish in their beak. Oh my goodness. They are such a fun friend to find in the ocean. So let's see, we have one turtle, two puffins, one, two. I wonder what animal we're gonna find next on our counting Adventure. Oh my goodness. My friends, do you recognize this fish? It's a pretty famous fish. Let's see. I'm going to get out of the way so you can see all these beautiful fish. And again, my friends, if you have any questions, if you're wondering about anything today during our program, you are welcome to text those questions in to 562-286-1838. Happy to answer any questions if you are curious about anything this morning. Okay, so I spy three fish. One, two, three. Miss Sarah was nice. Remove my banner so we could clearly see fish number three. These are clownfish. 
Oh my goodness. Do you, do you notice also? What are they living in? What's all this? Is that grass? Hmm. Is it, conf is it, um, confetti? Spaghetti? Hmm. No. <gasps> they live in a very special home. They live in an anemone. Oh my goodness. So they live in an anemone. Anemone looks like this friend kind of almost looks like a flower under the water here. And that's, I think, what they're, they're kind of named after, the, the flower called the anemone, too. Anyways, they have a very interesting way to help them catch their food. They actually have little stinging cells to help them catch their food and then bring it into their middle, which is where their mouth is. I know this looks like a belly button. It's not a belly button. It's their mouth. But anyways, they use stinging cells to help them catch their food. But wait a minute. We just said the anemone lives, or excuse me, the clownfish you can also call them anemone fish, so I think so that's where my brain was going this morning. Anyways, we have said the clownfish lives in the anemone, but the anemone has stinging cells. How does a clownfish live in the anemone and not get stung? What? So the clownfish actually has a special coating on its body so it doesn't get stung by the anemone. It actually is covered in a special layer of mucus. Mucus. That's kind of the stuff that comes out of your nose. It's kind of gross, but it's kind of awesome, and it helps protect our anemone friends, or our clownfish friends, from the anemone. So they can hang out in the anemones. They get to be safe because they're hanging out in the anemone. Don't get to be bothered too much by other friends that might get stung that don't have that special mucus coating. And then I think they help keep the anemone clean a little bit. They definitely eat a lot of leftovers too. So I think they get a snack in addition to a home, which is pretty nice. There are a lot of anemones, a lot of clownfish in this video too. I don't know if I can count them all. I'm going to try. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I've lost track. Okay. How'd you guys do? Whoa, there's a little bitty baby. Oh my goodness. There's way too many anemones in here. Whew. Larry, too many clownfish in here, anemone fish. Oh my goodness. Actually, while we're on here, do you notice when they're going in between all the little tentacles, are they kind of hiding a little bit, almost like disappearing? I noticed that the stripes on their body help them blend in with our anemone here. I think these, get one, and it, that one kind of looks like the tentacles of the anemone. So they actually have some pretty cool camouflage on their body. All right, I think we should see who is next in our counting adventure here. Ooh, this is a different friend. Now, I see a few animals in here, but I actually want to focus on this part of our animal friends here. So these are a type of jelly. These are a type of sea jelly called a moon jelly, I think, because people thought it looked like the beautiful full moon. And this friend has these things here. These are their stomachs. How many stomachs do they have? How many stomachs do we have? We have one stomach. But the jelly here has one, two, three, four. Four stomachs for our jellies. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? What would you eat if you had four stomachs? Oh my goodness. I think I would have one for breakfast and one for lunch and one for dinner. And then I think I need to save that four stomach all for dessert. That sounds, that sounds like, that's, that's your four meals a day, right? Yep. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. Sounds good. All right. I think that's how I would, I would divvy up my four, my four stomachs if I had four tummies. <laughs> so they have four stomachs in their body. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Now, um, jellies also have little stinging cells to help, th help them catch their food, just like their cousins, the anemones do. They're actually related to each other, even though they don't quite look the same. They have their stinging cells down in their tentacles here, and they are o 
okay swimmers, but they kind of go with the flow. They go where the water takes them. So they'll be kind of drifting in the water, and then they'll come across some tasty snacks along the way. They like to eat teeny tiny little shrimp, maybe some plankton floating in the water. They'll sting those with their tentacles, and then they have these really frilly arms. Let me see if I can point them out. They're a lot thicker right over there um, to help bring them up to the middle where their mouth is and eat. Now they don't have a mouth like us. They don't have teeth or chompers to be looking for. They just have a little hole. Kind of, I think it's kind of where the that kind of horseshoe shape kind of means there's like a hole and a hole and a hole and a hole. And then they'll put their food in the their mouth essentially and then um, 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 and eat it. Now, if you watch your jellies here at the aquarium, sometimes you can tell when they've had a really nice breakfast, lunch, or dinner because their tummies will go from being sort of this kind of clearish, kind of milky white color to being like hot pink because they have shoved a bunch of little shrimp into their tummies and they're like, oh, I am so full. I had an amazing lunch. It was beautiful, but I'm going to take a nap now and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to work on that for a little bit. So yeah, you can sometimes tell what a jelly has eaten by looking at the colors of their tummy. Oh my goodness. It's pretty amazing. So let's see. We've done some, a lot of counting. Ooh, here are some beautiful jellies swimming. I don't think I've seen this video before. I think these are our moon jellies hanging out in our touch pool here at the aquarium. That's pretty awesome. Miss Sarah just noticed that I think some of their tummies look full. I agree, they look pretty poofy. There's some some poofy, poofy full pink tummies there in our video. Oh, oh I just noticed that that one has more than four stomachs. Do you see that? One, two, three. I think that one had five stomachs. So yeah, four is the norm. Um, but every once in a while, you might have some that are few, fewer and some that are less. Uh, I think it's all the same capacity. It's just um, divvied up differently depending on how many stomachs you want. I mean, that's just natural variation. So just like people can have different eye colors, hair colors, these guys sometimes have different numbers of tummies. Oh my goodness. Let's see, we practice swimming like a turtle. Do you think you could swim like a jelly? Hmm, let's see. So I'm gonna make myself kind of a bell like our jelly. That's what we call kind of the body of the jelly. And they kind of move, kind of move like this and they kind of go with the flow. So let's see, I think the water is gonna take me this way. So I'm gonna go this way, along with the water. Oh, oh, I think it reversed. I think it reversed. Oh, I gotta go this way. There we go. Whoosh, how are we doing? Oh my gosh, you are beautiful jellies. I love it. Good job, my friends. Okay, all right. Whew. We're doing a lot of swimming today. Okay, so we found four beautiful, or we found four tummies, I should say, on our beautiful jellies. There are a lot of jellies behind me. That's a lot, a lot of jellies to count. But I think we have some more animal friends to find and count today. So let's see who our next friend is. <gasps> There's something behind me. I'm gonna get out of the way. Let's see what this is. Now I, again, count one animal, but this animal has something on it that is the number that comes after four. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, ooh. My friends, do you see something that this animal has that they have five of? Ooh. All right, my friends. So we're looking at our sea star here. We have one sea star. I like this one. He kind of looks like he's kind of sitting in a couch. He's like, oh, gonna go. take a nap. Um, but this sea star has one, two, three, four, five arms. There are five arms on a sea star, kind of like we have five fingers on our hands. Oh my goodness. Now, the other cool thing, actually there's a, quite a few cool things about the sea star's arms, but um, another cool thing about them is the underside of their arms. So underneath their arms, they have rows and rows of sticky little feet called tube feet. Tube feet, think tube like a straw. Um, and that helps them move around the exhibit. Ooh, that's a great picture. So you can see all, they almost look like they have little teeny tiny little suction cups on the other side. So they have lots of tube feet, lots of tube feet, 
lots of tube feet, tube feet, and tube feet. And what is that in the middle? That does not look like tube feet at all. My friends, that is something completely different. <gasps> oh my goodness, my friends. That is the sea star's tummy. That's their stomach. Oh my goodness. So one of the cool things about sea stars is how they eat. It's kind of gross, but it's kind of awesome. So they eat by taking their stomach out, plopping it on what they're eating, kind of turning that into soup, and then putting their stomach back in their body. So one of their favorite foods to eat are things in hard shells like clams and crabs and snails. But if they're trying to get inside the clam, clam has two parts to their shell, they have to open it. Kind of like we need to open them if we're trying to eat a clam or a mussel. You're not going to take the whole mussel in your mouth, you're going to break a tooth. So they will use their sticky tube feet to kind of give that shell a hug, go right open. And then in the middle is their tummy. They're going to take their tummy out. They're going to stuff it in the mussel. They're going to blow it up and kind of make mussel soup and then gulp, swallow their stomach back, which is pretty weird, but pretty awesome. Can you imagine if you ate like that, if you came home for dinner and your mom's like, here you go, honey, dinner's ready. And you're like, thanks, mom, it looks delicious. And you put your stomach on the di dinner plate and, and then swallowed your stomach back. I don't know if that would be very good table manners, but that's how a sea star eats with his tummy. Oh my goodness. Now, do you think sea stars, do you think they move fast or do you think they move slow? Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I think they move. Oh, I forgot that this can be become a video. <laughs> Let's see if we can notice some of our sea stars moving here. I have a feeling, just by looking at this, I think they're moving kind of slow. I agree. They kind of stick to the wall kind of like this, and then they go like that with their two feet because they have to reach with their feet and then kind of pull themselves across and then reach with their feet and then pull themselves across so they are very very slow friends in our counting adventure today oh my goodness sure i think miss sarah's gonna get us a video of one swimming Ooh, i like this one this one's a different star this one's actually moving a little bit faster than you might expect this, I think, is, um, I forget if this is a sand star. Or anyway, it's a tropical star because I notice it's hanging out by some coral. And their two feet are a little bit different. They're a little bit thicker. And they kind of float on top of the sand almost rather than being a little bit closer. So, yeah, they move fast a little bit depending on how their two feet are made. Very cool. Oh my goodness. There it goes. Bye. All right. Let's see. I think we have a couple more friends to meet. Maybe one. I think we can get to maybe one or two more. So let's see. Whoa. What's going on in here? My friends, I think these, these friends, these friends might be hiding. I'm going to get out of the way. Let me see. So we can see what's going on in this picture. Ooh, my friends, do you count six of something? I count six of these things. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six of these friends, which are limpets. Limpets is a tar, or let's say a limpet, limpets plural. Limpet is a type of snail. So they have a shell like this, and then underneath the shell is a little strong foot, and they and they stick on to rocks. This so friends looks like they're kind of wedged into some rocks, maybe at a tide pool, and they're gonna hang out and eat algae. So they are kind of like vegetarians, and they like to eat algae that are hanging out at the rocks. So I count six limpet friends: one, two, three, four five, six, hanging out in the tide pool. Very cool. 
Okay, my friends. Are there more animals to count? I think there might be. Let's see. Let's see if we can count. Oh my goodness! Get out of the way. What are those? <gasps> These friends are very excited about a snack. I see. He's floating in the water. These animals. During breakfast time. Whoa. Now these friends are called garden eels. They like to bury themselves tail first in the sand. They'll have a little burrow to pop their heads out and be like snacks. Pop snacks, please. There's some little tiny, I don't know if you can see, it kind of looks like it's snowing almost in the background. There's little tiny shrimp that are kind of floating in the water that they're trying to gobble up and eat for breakfast. How many eels? Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. There's a little teeny, teeny, tiny one hiding right there. Oh my goodness. So there are seven garden eels in my video. Whoa. Now these garden eels, these are drop eels, I believe. They live in a little bit warmer water. I also noticed, do you notice that they have some dots on them? I see lots of little teeny tiny dots. But there's also, ooh, that's a, this one looks a little grumpy, but that's okay. Uh, I also noticed, not only do they have all these little, I'm not gonna make you count all these little teeny tiny dots. That's a lot of counting to do. And we don't have time to count all those dots. That's a lot of dots. But I notice it also has a big spot and a big spot there. And we call those sometimes when we see big extra spots on animals, sometimes those function, those act as what we call false eye spots. So it's kind of like having a pretend eye on another place on your body. And sometimes that confuses things that might want to eat this garden eel as a tasty snack because they'll either think, wait a minute, is that the eye? Is that the eye? Is that the eye? I don't know where this animal's facing. I don't know where its face is anymore because I'm seeing some eyes on different parts of their body. Um, so they might think, oh, I don't know where to go for this animal. That's really confusing. So sometimes it helps keep animals safe by kind of having a little bit looks like extra eyes on their body, which is pretty amazing. Oh my goodness. So we have seven garden eels in our garden this morning. All right, my friends, I think we have time for one last animal today. It's my favorite, one of my favorites, I should say. And it has a lot of, a lot of something. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm gonna get out of the way. My friends, do you recognize this animal? <gasps> oh my goodness, we have an octopus here. An octopus has kind of a number hiding in its name. If we think of octopus and we think of octo, like an octagon, like the shape, an octagon has eight sides. And an octopus has eight of something too, right? What does an octopus have eight of? <gasps> Ooh, I think I see it. My friends, if you said an octopus has eight arms, you are correct. I agree with you. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight arms. And I love that these arms also kind of have polka dots on them. We have a polka dot, polka dot theme going today. So these polka dots are actually big, giant suction cups, which help the octopus move, helps the octopus grab on to tasty snacks to eat, and they'll bring it all the way into the middle, boop, 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 right there, where their mouth is, and go crunch and eat it. So octopuses, the only hard part in their body is that mouth, is that beak. So you can have a big, you know, 20-foot octopus, but its beak's only that big, so it can squeeze into all sorts of nooks and crannies and crevices, even though it's a really, really 
big octopus. They're pretty awesome. One of the other things I love about octopuses, not only do they have eight wiggly squiggly arms, um, they are very good at hiding. So this octopus kind of looks red. This is a giant Pacific octopus. This is kind of the normal color of the octopus, but if it wanted to hide somewhere, it could absolutely blend in with the rocks and kind of its surroundings in the background. So they have the ability to change their color by some special kind of sacks of ink in their body, which is pretty cool. And I'll be like, Ooh, I'm gonna be looking more like a rock now, be all gray and white. They can also go from being very smooth to being very bumpy. So they are a very cool animal friend that we have in our oceans. Ooh, I think we're gonna get a video of one moving around with their eight wiggly squiggly arms. They're so awesome. You might even be, if you look really close in between them, those arms, do you see their mouth? You might get a glimpse of it. There it goes. That's one of my favorite times when I'm walking by the octopus exhibit when they've decided to be, I'm gonna show off that I am an amazing octopus. Look at me. That's one of my favorite bits. See all the little sections going up so on the glass. Oh my goodness, my friends. Well, we had an amazing time today practicing our counting. So I hope you had fun going on this counting adventure with me this morning, discovering a little bit more about our animal friends. Um, so I want to thank you guys very much for joining us today. Um, if you have any more questions, again, you are welcome to ask. We just ask that you email us. Um, instead, we'll get those numbers kind of. Come back in just a minute. Oh, there I am. <laughs> okay. So um, you're welcome to email us those questions. Instead, that email address is down here uh, below. It is live at lbaop.org. So again, if you have any further questions uh, about the ocean, please feel free to email those questions in. But thank you guys. So here comes my zebra shark again. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, have a great rest of your morning, and we'll see you next time, uh, I believe, on Wednesday? On Wednesday. I think is our next uh, online academy class. So thank you guys very much for joining us today and have a great rest of your morning. Bye everybody.